Hi, I'm Joe Weisenfelder with Cars.com. This is a 2014 Jaguar F-Type. It's called the F-Type because it is the spiritual successor to the classic E-Type coupe. Um, as such, it's arguably the only pure sports car the Jaguar has had in decades. Now, there's some changes in the styling of the F-Type, even when you compare it with a lot of the other modern designs in Jaguar's lineup. Uh, to my eye, it looks a little bit Japanese, actually, in front. Um, but put Japan aside, the uh, English designers actually say that one of the influences for the headlights was, and I'm not making this up, Darth Vader's TIE Fighter from Star Wars. I'm not sure I actually see it, but if you think about it, the Empire, full of Brits. There are currently three trim levels for the F-Type. There's the base, which has a supercharged 3-liter V6 engine with 340 horsepower. There's the F-Type S, same engine, more power, 380 horsepower. And then you have what we have behind me here, and that is the F-Type V8S. It has a 5-liter V8, also supercharged, and 495 horsepower. The real telltale sign is the exhaust pipes. You can get two big bore exhaust in the center if it has a V6 engine. The V8 has the quads like this one. Now we're just a couple of months away from getting a coupe version of the F-Type in the United States as a 2015 model, but Jaguar started with the convertible, the two-seater Roadster, um, and they chose to go with a powered fully automatic soft top. Uh, I think it was a good move. For one thing, it opens or closes in 11 seconds, which is really quick. It happens even at speeds up to about 30 miles per hour, so if it starts to rain or something, you don't have to pull over and put it in park, which you do with a lot of the retractable hardtops. Now, typical of two-seat vehicles, there's actually enough space for a larger adult. I'm six feet tall and I have plenty of leg room, especially considering that, unfortunately, there is no stick shift version available, at least not yet. So I'm able to sit back a little bit farther. And as for headroom, I have to say, lots of really generous vertical motion on the adjustable seat. With the top up, I've got about you know, this much space to spare. And then if you're a shorter driver, you'll find it goes up several inches, quite far, far enough that I couldn't sit comfortably with the top up. Uh, and that really makes it versatile, especially with the memory settings here for two drivers of different statures. Jaguars often surprise people with how uh, engaging they are to drive, how sporty, even the ones that don't look that sporty. Uh, this car definitely dials it up. Uh, it has excellent handling, really good weight distribution front to rear. I feel like the V8 version is a little bit nose heavier. There's more push in the corners. Uh, would make sense with a larger engine in front. Uh, good precise steering. I think it's a little bit twitchy at high speeds, depending on the road surface, though some of my colleagues didn't have as much of a problem with it. We all seem to agree that there could be better steering feedback, but we've also said the same thing recently of the Porsche Boxster and Cayman, which are in some ways comparable cars. Um, as for acceleration, really, really nice. 5.1 seconds to 60 miles per hour in the base version, 4.8 seconds in the F-Type S, and in this version, 4.2 seconds to 60 miles an hour. Unfortunately, at this time, there's no manual transmission, though it's possible we'll get one in the future. What you get instead is an eight-speed automatic. It is not a dual-clutch automated manual. It's conventional, but it is nice and quick. Not a lot of lag. I don't have much trouble with it. It's a regular drive mode. You can move the stick over and get a sport mode that holds the lower gears longer. And it also comes with paddle shifters, as so many cars do these days here on the steering wheel. Unfortunately, they have a rubbery feel. It is just not classy. One of the best features in the F-Type is the dynamic mode. What's great about this is it lets you set up your own profile here in the dynamic I page where you can either use factory or my setup where you choose dynamic or regular for the engine response, the steering assist, suspension level, uh, the way the transmission uh, responds as well. And then all you have to do at any time is flip that lever once and it does what you want it to. Now, we've seen this in BMW and a couple other manufacturers, but it's still pretty rare. Great to have here. Now, like other Jaguars and Land Rovers, the philosophy here for feature control is a simple touchscreen. Uh, thankfully, unlike some of the recent Land Rovers, uh, there are real buttons flanking the screen instead of uh, the touch-sensitive panels. Uh, I'd say this system is a little bit outdated um, and actually a little slow to react, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, but otherwise, it generally does the job. 
Uh, one of the interesting things about this car, like so many Jaguars, is it has lots of theater, uh, T-H-E-A-T-R-E -E in the British style. Uh, for example, when you first get in, the engine start-stop button is flashing red like a heartbeat. A uh, couple other things, when you turn the air on, for example, the vents kind of rise up out. There's no reason for this, by the way. You can see over them, so it's all just, you know, a surprise and delight, as they call it. Also, you notice there's a little seat icon on the dial here. When you push on it, there's a little animation that shows you rotate this way to turn the seat heat on. That's pretty neat. I think the most useful of these features, motorized features at least, is in the stick shift. When you have it in S mode um, to the left for the transmission sport mode, you go to push the park button and it will not uh, go into park. Instead of beeping at you and telling you to move the shift lever over, it does it by itself. This brings us to what I consider the F-Type's uh, biggest shortcoming. It's not uncommon for a small car like this to have a small trunk. Uh, the problem here is that the seven cubic feet, which sounds decent, is actually strangely distributed. Uh, I, I'm not saying you couldn't get a set of golf clubs in here if you made a real big effort, but it's not terrific. What you'll see is there's one deep well that nothing of normal size will fit in except maybe a backpack and then everything else is just kind of short and wide you can stick some stuff in under there so uh, it's a common issue with small cars but the shape itself is definitely a problem here we're big fans of the Jaguar XK coupe and convertible uh, but those are more touring cars than this they have four seats uh, this thing on the other hand definitely the real deal it is a blast to drive Jaguar's been out of this game for a long time really good to have them back.